What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. So today's daily verse is Colossians 1 15 to 18 and I'm reading from the NLT otherwise known as the New Living Translation and it reads Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation for through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead, so he is first in everything. So what is this telling you? And we think about it for one moment. Basically the text is saying for Christ is obviously the visible image of the invisible God. He is the image of the Word. He is the, the Word became flesh in Christ. He is the image of God himself. So he is the image of God in the flesh. You understand? So he is God. He is God in the flesh. He is one part of the Trinity which is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And, and uh, we believe but like Christ, but Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit and the Father are three equal parts of, of the Godhead and are both independent of each other character-wise, but they are three manifestations of God, you understand? So when it says Christ is the visible image of the invisible God, it's because no one has laid eyes on the Father because they can't, no one can lay eyes on the Father except Christ. So he is basically the physical representation of the Father as, as a person. So when, uh, when Adam is formed from the dust, and he's formed in the likeness and image of God. He's formed in the image of Christ. For Christ is the image, image of God which is given to man. You understand? Or he's given to the world. So, he says, He existed before anything was created. And is supreme over all creation. Because God is eternal. He exists out of space and time. And sometimes that's a hard thing to, to grasp, you know, in, in the head. Or how can God exist outside of space time? But as we know through science, you know, time is just an illusion. And God doesn't live with like, you know, limited perceptions as we do. He can see into, you know, all every dimension, the spiritual realm. He, he's, he, he exists outside of the universe. It's very hard for, for us to comp comprehend something that lives outside of space time, outside of the universe. But that's where God is. He existed before all things. Because he's outside it, forming, forming the universe with his hands. He created space time himself. He created life. He's supreme over all creation because he created it. I don't just, you know... If I create a cake, if I bake a cake in the oven and it comes out, it's a nice cake, I'm supreme over that cake because it's my cake, I created that cake. Likewise, he created this universe in the same sense. He fashioned it, created it with his hands, formed it, formed man in his own image. Therefore, he owns the universe. But through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. So God created all things. He created everything. We can see everything we can't see. He created all of the spiritual beings, the angels, all these things. They're everywhere all created. And we're all created for a purpose, to serve him. <clears throat> we were created for ourselves. We were created, we were created for our own purpose. We were created for his purposes, to serve him and his needs and what he wants us to do, not what we want ourselves to do. And it's only when we figure out his will for our lives that we will finally find true peace and joy in the Holy Spirit in Christ's presence. That's when we realize what his will is for our lives. When we realize what his, his, his will is for our individual lives. Then we will find true peace, happiness and success. But the world will have you thinking, oh, I've got to do things my way. It's all about me. I'm my own God. No, you're not your own God. God is your God. Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, your provider is your Lord. And no one else is. And when it says here, for through him... God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. So what does it mean through him, God, if, if Jesus Christ is God? Look, <clears throat> there's, the, there's the God, which is the Father, and there's the Lord God, which is Jesus Christ. And you can see, if you look in the Old Testament in Genesis, you can see the difference with the creation story. So when it's saying things are created through him, you got to think of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as three independent parts of the same Godhead, or three independent manifestations of God. And basically what I, what I tell people is, the far, the, this is how I explain it, and it's, it's obviously every, any way of trying to explain it from a human perspective is flawed, I will, I will say, but this is my own sort of thing I explain. I say, 
the father is like the architect and then the son is like is like the builder and the holy spirit is like the tools which the builder uses to build the architect's plan and that's how i imagine the father son and holy spirit the trinity at work you know but such as thrones kingdoms rulers and authorities in the unseen world so he created the hierarchy of things in the unseen world things which we can't see or know exist but they're there there's thrones kingdoms rulers and authorities over every part of the earth <clears throat> we're trying to work against god trying to work against the kingdom and one day he's going to come back and he's going to he's going to basically destroy these authorities once and for all at the moment, we can overcome these authorities, these rulers, if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and then we can overcome these things. Then these things, they, they, try, and, they try and fire us, they try and bring us down for any way possible. If we stand firm in the faith, darkness cannot reside where light is. When we shine, up, when we shine God's light on them through us, the darkness, it, it disappears, it can't, it disintegrates. Wherever the darkness is, the light cannot reside and it cannot be. And the light isn't tolerant of darkness, the light expels darkness wherever it may go. So, back to my scripture. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Because basically, Jesus is the word. When, when, the, God, when, the, when the Bible talks about the word, it's talking about Christ. Because basically, the word became flesh, meaning God's word. The word of God, it became flesh in the form of Jesus Christ. And as we know, the universe was formed at the word of God. Therefore, Christ holds the universe together. Just deep that for a second. Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, he holds the universe together because he is the word of God. The word of God created the universe, it created life itself, he holds it all together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is the first in everything. He is the first in everything because he created everything. He is a part of the Godhead. Everything was created through him and for him. Because ultimately Christ is king and he is supreme, you know, you got to deep that, you got to understand that Christ is God. So he's not just a man, he's not just any old guy who went out preaching, no. <clears throat> he is God in the flesh and he died for our sins. So that through belief in his death, in his life, in his resurrection, we may find forgiveness for our sins and eternal life. Now remember that and remember who God is. He is the invisible image of the, or sorry, he is the visible image, my apologies, of the invisible God. So he is the creator of the world and the earth, and he holds all of life and existence together. And that's something we got, we should meditate on today, family, and think about the importance of Christ in our lives. So just turn to Christ in all that we do, and focus on his love. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day today. Peace.